What's up golfers, welcome back to New Nine Golf. I recently vlogged Crowbush Golf Course in Prince Edward Island and it's by far one of my favorite golf courses, probably in my top five of all time. I'm playing the tips, it's tipping out at 6,925 yards at sea level, which is a big difference for me playing at like 3,300 in Calgary. I'm gonna watch this entire vlog with you, give you a little play by play on my experience at Crowbush, let's go. Okay, let's get into it. So the first tee, I'm playing the tip. So you'll see on the uh, tee box there is a crow. Those are the tee markers for the tips, which are their tournament tees. First hole, I decided to hit a driver. You can see there's trees on the left, trees on the right, and you'll find in this course vlog, there are a ton of trees on this course. This one I hit just a little left towards the bunker, and uh, there I am. So I'm really tight-sided and chunk it out of there. Fairway bunkers are so tough, especially with wedges. Like it's impossible not to want to hit down on it. This here, we had about 80 yards coming in. We're trying to get up and down for par, which is not the greatest start on this golf course, but we have an honest look at it. So we'll see what we can do here. The guys that I'm playing with in the blue standing still is my father-in-law, Phil, AKA Lori, AKA Lawrence. He's Lawrence, he's the man of a hundred different names, but that is my father-in-law. The guy that just walked in is Brent and he is Brody, who is in the red, his dad. So we're playing with the four of them. Brody lives in PEI, he's one of my best friends I grew up with, so it's super nice to get a round out with him. Second hole here is only 366 yards. I decided to hit a hybrid. I wanted to get a fairway finder and I think I hit it so good it went just through the fairway. That went about 265, so I had 100 yards coming in. The green I couldn't see. I could only see the pin, so I couldn't tell if it was really front, middle, back. When I get up here, I'm gonna find that I airmailed the green. So now I'm short-sided, have to hit a little flop shot to get up and down. Got it up in the air, that's a new shot I'm working on and it just went a little bit too far. So we have an honest, let's say about 15, 20 feet to save par. Hit it where we wanted, it was turning and just hit it just a little bit too hard. So to go bogey bogey start on one of my favorite golf courses of all time is not ideal. Um, the goal here today would be to break, seven, or break 80. If you could break 80 at Crowbush, this is some really good golf. We finally have a par five, so I'm hoping I can get a birdie and get some of this back. I pushed it a little to the right, and uh, I still, oh, what happened here? I dropped, I think. I couldn't find my ball, so I took the line in. So I decided to drop from where I thought my point of entry was. I had about 200 coming in, and it was a super hot day, just airmailed it. So this would be my fourth shot. Three was a drop, four was a chip. I have that last little six footer to save par. There we go, finally a par on the scorecard. Down. So that felt good. Um, if you're wondering what shoes those are, those are my Jordan trainers. Jordan ST trainers, they are by far some of my favorite golf shoes. And uh, if you haven't seen our Jordan video, I have an older video, I'll put a link up top so you can see kind of all my Jordan collection. Um, since they've grown, but I do love Jordans. This is another shortish par four, 379, hit a hybrid in the fairway. And this was what I thought was gonna be one of my best shots of the day. I only hit, I think, a gap wedge in. So about 130, I went flag hunting. I think I hit it like just five feet short of the pin and then it sucked back big time. So I see, I was happy with it. I get up there, I'm like, oh my God, I have this whatever, 30, 40 footer. And count it. like. To think you hit a tap and birdie to get up there and you have like a 40 footer coming in, not ideal. So I'll get lucky every once in a while. This is another really cool par five. This is reaching out at 603 yards, huge par five. You can see we're hitting towards the clubhouse in the distance and beyond that is the Atlantic Ocean. Such a cool tee shot and you'll see more into the course how much ocean there is because there's a lot of water that you guys are gonna see here. I decided I was too far to go for it. I had to go over water. So I decided to hit like a 170 layup and there was no chance. I think I was like over 300 yards coming in, which is just so not gonna happen. So I think I hit an eight iron and then this is gonna be a nine iron. Pushed it, missed the fairway. You gotta hate that when you go to layup and you miss the fairway. Story of my life. This was a nine iron coming in and we went flag hunting. This was all over the pin and I think it went just past the pin and I might've rolled off onto the fringe or stayed on, but I know that oh. obviously in the rough, I wouldn't get as much spin, but uh, we're definitely flag hunting. People. So we got this guy for birdie. I definitely landed. I landed two feet over the hole and it just rolled out. 
Thought I had it the whole way, thought I muscled it in. Left corner, so that was for birdie. This tapping's gonna be for par. Chances are they gave it to me. Tap it in to make sure. Score-wise, I should still be two over. Or no, I think I'm only one over. One over, because I had two bogeys to start, a par, then that birdie. This is a par three. Yeah. So this par three, I yeah. kind of chunked my, how far is it playing? 191, I probably hit a six iron and uh, just caught behind the ball. This is one of my favorite drives on the entire golf course. Like, look at that. You got water on the left, water on the right. You're driving over a bridge to go to a green. You'll see in the distance, those are some cottages that you can stay at if you decide to stay at Crowbush. It's one of the golf resorts that like no one talks about. Like people talk about Bandon all the time and Cabot, but to golf in Crowbush is some of the nicest golf in the world. Right there, we had like a huge putt. I don't know how far that is, maybe a hundred feet. 70 feet and I got this long 10 15 footer coming back finally make one it's so funny it's these little short putts that I just can't seem to get but we'll take a couple long ones this here is another short par 4 a lot of their par 4s are under 400 yards the wind was really starting to pick up so the wind was straight into our face I had to clear about probably 260 yards of all of this water and unfortunately I pushed it just too far right so we got to go over the exact same bridge that we just followed over this is still kind of some pond or maybe it is I'm not sure if the ocean leaks into there because beyond this hole we'll see the Atlantic Ocean when we get up there so I did drop this is my third You'll see on the very far left of the screen, there's people walking and they're actually under a net. So there's people that can access a public beach just beyond this hole and they walk in this pathway that's covered by the net just so they don't get hit. So I did air mail it. So that was three coming over here, four up there and it just runs away. It's so frustrating when these short little par fours add up to big scores. So this is for five. Gotta love the bogey putt from 50 feet. And rolled it pretty good. We'll tap in oh, for a double. Play. So super unfortunate <laughs> to, to uh, get a double on this hole, especially since it is one of their signature holes and it goes from bad to worse. This hole, par three, 219 straight into the wind. The pin was playing like 240 and I don't know why I thought I can hit an iron 240, but serves me right. I pushed it, went into the weeds. There is a drop area. So I went from double to now play this beautiful par three with the ocean in the background that I'm gonna have to drop three. So it's not looking so hot on the scorecard, guys. If you guys were ever considering golfing in Canada, I highly suggest going to Prince Edward Island. There's so many golf courses and I'm gonna be releasing a couple more vlogs of my experience in PEI. Really hoping to get up and down just to save a bogey, but uh, didn't give myself a tap in by any means. This is gonna be for a four. And just died off. I felt like I was rolling it really good. I think if you see a lot of my putts here, the hole is tracking and it was just my speed that was off. So unfortunately we went from double to double, not our best. This is the ninth coming back to the clubhouse and it's reaching out at like 367, 370. I was super frustrated. Now I'm straight downwind. So I thought uh, if I hit my best drive, I could get maybe close to the green and we're just two bunker shy of the green side bunker. If I can get up and down here, get a birdie. I just don't think it released. It was an intimidating shot. There's people on the uh, patio on the back of the clubhouse watching and uh, I was hoping to put on a show for them and not quite the case here. Got this long one for birdie, little misread, but uh, we'll tap in for par to end the double bogey train. So super frustrating. Um, I'm sure we'll have some scores up on the screen. I wasn't counting. I don't have the scorecard in front of me what I was, but uh, wasn't great. Looking for a new nine here. This uh, par four, I thought I pushed it. So I thought we were back on the double bogey train there. We almost saw a club toss. Not quite, I got lucky. I'm actually right of the 18th hole. And uh, I did put a really good strike on this one. I was coming in about 170, 175. So by no means is it a uh, pin that I should be going at. Again, I think I hit it four feet behind the pin and just released. You'll see just short of this pin is a huge drop off. 
lipped out. So frustrating. Like that happened. That's kind of been the the theme of the day is kind of just some lip outs there. They gave me that par. What you didn't see on that green is the big slope. So all my playing partners kept getting up to the pin and coming back down and up and down. This is one of their signature holes. Right behind me is the Atlantic Ocean and some of their signature holes. It's a par five, hit a really good tee shot, and I have about 220 coming in. The pin was tucked kind of on the far left side, and I decided to just go at it. I had nothing to lose. I hit a four iron and it went just left of my line. If I can get up and down here for birdie, that would definitely help my score. A little right of my line, but I had the perfect distance. Yeah. So I got a little uh, knee shaker to get a birdie and get some uh, strokes back. So to start the back nine to go par birdie, we're one under through two on the back nine. Feels really good. Think the game is coming back and watch this. See ya, four left, middle of the tree, brand new Pro V, crack another one. Golf is so dumb. Like how dumb is golf? You're like, oh my God, this is so easy. Par, birdie, like I should play full time. This was a 200 yard par three. I'm now dropping three again on another par three. So frustrating. Got this little guy to save a bogey. And lip out again, another double. Is anyone keeping track how many doubles I've had on par threes? Super frustrating. Went from one under to one over. This hole, again, I'm like, okay, let's get it back. Let's hit a hybrid. It's only a 400 yard par three, or par four. Guess what I did? Snap it. Thought I was OB, however, I forgot that it opened up over here. I have this huge shot over water and I can see the green. I got so, so lucky. I was about 160 coming in. This would be about a nine iron. And uh, what you can't see is the people to my left who are teeing off on the next hole. Um, they did say good shot, so they thought they saw it hit the green, and uh, it did. So to have thought I lost it OB again, to now have a birdie putt is a huge saving grace. The greens here at Crowbush are fantastic. They're very receptive, they're soft, they hold, they spin, and they give a lot of lip outs to your boy today. Frustrating. But we got to look at birdie, and we'll definitely take that. Another really good look. We'll, we'll take a tap in par. Um, this day that we played, it could not have been better. You'll see there isn't a cloud in the sky. It was probably 31, 32 degrees Celsius. Did have some wind, but overall is a great day. This is par five here. We've had the right miss going and it decided to stay to the right. Right about here in the round is when it started to back up just a little bit. There was a group that decided to sneak into the back nine and slow us down at no fault of the golf course. Just some members that thought they could uh, hop in there. From here, I hit about a five iron. I think I caught it super chunky. Um, I was only 220 into the green and just didn't catch it very good. So if I can get up and down here, we'll definitely save a birdie. We got that high floater going and put that to about five feet. So super forward straight putt, not even five feet, three feet for birdie. What happens? Pulls it. Missed everything on the right side. Had a tap in for birdie. Took my par, super frustrating, got out of here. This hole's really cool because that uh, patio on the clubhouse is behind us. So people that are finishing drinking beers will stay up and uh, watch everyone. And uh, to hit the fairway with people watching you is a feat in itself, so felt really good. I only had a pitching wedge coming in. So a pitching wedge to a green is about 150, should be no problem. And I definitely misread this green. Look at it pick up speed past the hole. Watch this. Oh my God. Catches the false front, goes to off the green. So it was putting on the green to now putting off the green. Wasn't feeling confident in the wedge at that time. Decided to put it back up. This is for par and goes twice as fast up. So I thought for sure I was down the grain, obviously when it rolled off the green, thought I was into the grain. Pushed it too far. Oh, made a putt. I, would, I wasn't sure if I made that putt or not. So that would have been for bogey. That was a pretty good bogey. This hole is one of their signature holes, the 16th. The 16th is only 360 yards. And this is where you can see that nice little pond in front of you. And you can see the ocean uh, beyond. Right here, like just by far, one of my favorite holes in the entire world. 
it's nothing but you and this golf course that exists, the Atlantic Ocean. There's a nice cool breeze. It just feels amazing. You saw back there a public beach beyond the distance. So that's where some of the locals go or obviously tourists as well. But uh, had a birdie putt and just couldn't make it. Golf is so frustrating when you have expectations of playing well and you just don't for some reason. We'll take the tap and par. Um, I'm to the point now where I'm just thrilled to be with my family, golfing, and friends, and it's uh, it's been a really fun day. This par three is really funny because the green you can't really see from the tee box. You can see the flag, but that's it. Yay. So you're kind of throwing a hope and a prayer up there. I hit a gap wedge and look at that. The Atlantic Ocean, some waves crashing, a golf club in my hand, hitting a golf ball. Like, life doesn't get much better than this, I'll, I'll tell you that much. To play this golf course is about $100 Canadian, maybe $120, and uh, that's with a cart. And you know, you can play other courses that are Oceanside for four, five, six, seven hundred bucks. This is probably one of the best value golf courses that there is in Canada, bar none. The 18th is a really long par four, 464 yards. And I decided, I think, to go into the trees. Luckily, I have a line. I went just under a branch. And uh, I think I end up in the greenside bunker. All right, we got to get up and down from here. What I love about this is the white fluffy sand. Some of the best bunkers I've been in. Wish I didn't experience the bunkers because I should be hitting more greens. But uh, I put that to maybe only four feet. So a really good bunk. Oh, not even. Yeah. Two feet. Little tap in to finish our round. And there we are. We didn't mm -hmm. shoot nearly as well as we wanted. Um, Golf is such a frustrating game, but vacation golf is the exception because you're traveling, enjoying a new uh, city or a province you've never been to. If you guys are considering traveling to PEI, I 100% recommend it. I'm gonna put their link in the description of the bio so you can see the different courses you can play and the accommodations. If you wanna go, you gotta book now. It was so, so busy. And like rental car companies, rental houses, their, their economy is blowing up and PEI is that place that not a lot of people know of, but but uh, hopefully more people know about it now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate all your guys' support. If you haven't already, make sure you smash subscribe and hit the like button. Definitely helps the channel. Thanks again. We'll check in with you next time.